Hello, I'm Richard. Welcome to my channel over and over and over again, which features everything to do with Arsenal. This is my second live show. And as you can see, I'm joined by a uh, very special guest tonight. Um, someone who I'm sure you'll recognise, um, obviously actor, author, general kind of big Arsenal fan as well. Delighted to welcome to the channel tonight, um, Tom Watt. How are you, Tom? I'm good, Rich. How are you? Yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. I'm saying, thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining me tonight and coming on the That's channel. Pleasure. Um, just really want to start at the beginning, really. I mean, I know you're obviously a big Arsenal fan for a number of years. What made you sort of start supporting Arsenal? What's the story behind that with you? Well, it was my local club. I grew up uh, about 20 minutes walk from uh, from Highbury, just the other side of Cali Road, quite near where Cali Road goes into Holloway Road. So I could walk to uh, walk to the ground in 20 minutes. So it sort of you, you kind of you spend your life being grateful for where you grew up, really, because... If yeah. you're going to support your local team, you'd do a lot worse than the Arsenal. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely, especially as there's one not that far away either. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but no, it was always going to be, uh, yeah, it was around the corner. So, I mean, well, what's your sort of earliest memory then of Arsenal as, as the start of the football club? Well, then, I, I mean, just as much as anything, it was that it's the whole kind of it's not really the football particularly because. To be fair, the football weren't great at the time, uh, mid sixties. It weren't. It weren't great. Obviously, sort of sixty eight onwards. Really, you started thinking there was something happening. It was, uh, you know, we'd had a, a, a long run without winning anything, and you know, some of the football hadn't been great. But just a lot of young players come through. You know, it's you look at. at Certainly, since the Second World War, and you look at Arsenal, and they you, you had these spells. You know, we had had it with the class of '82. You know, that ended up winning the league at Anfield, and then in '91. And mm. you hope that something similar might be happening now. You know, a lot of young players, really exciting young players, who come through more or less at the same time. And that happened in the '60s as well. I mean, there was half a team of players. Um, you know, Peter Simpson, Pat Rice, uh, Sammy Nelson. Peter Story, John Radford, Charlie George, John Samuels, all these players came through. Um, David Court, um, all those players kind of came through at just about the same time. And so towards the end of the 60s, things started getting quite excited. I mean, my first memories are just about going, really, you know, the walk around along Drayton Park and up up to, because uh, me and my old man used to go and stand on the clock end because that was, that was like the first terrace we come to. So that was where we started watching and, you know, I think quite like being no roof and all that. And it was it was fine in there. And um, but in terms of football, I suppose the first things really I remember were runs to two. Um, we had runs to two League Cup finals in 68 yeah. and 69, um, both of which ended in tears. But there was definitely um, 60, uh, 69. Um, we played Tottenham in the semi-final, two-legged semi-final. And obviously went to both legs. And the game at Tottenham was uh, its probably the most violent game of football I've ever seen. It was unbelievable. I mean, just people kicking lumps out of each other. But we actually, we'd, we'd won. John Radford had scored at Highbury. So we were 1-0 up. And um, Spurs took the lead. And then we, we equalised. So we went through. And... That seemed like, you know, because you, you're only talking seven or eight years since Tottenham had done the double. And they yeah. were the team, really. And then that happened in 69. And it was like, even though we went and blew it against Swindon in the final, that was like, um, it was like a changing of the guard, really. Mm. And obviously, you know, we went from that to winning the Fairs Cup to doing the double ourselves in 71. And since then... We kind of, in in terms of that balance of power, that because it, you know, growing up, you know, growing up around where I grew up, it was all about Arsenal and Tottenham. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of measured things in that way, um, and uh, from about sixty nine onwards, it's been all us. Yeah. So you know that that night, that night at White Hart Lane. Um, when we got the, I was on the, on the, we were right behind the goal in the Paxton Road. Um, it was unbelievable, amazing atmosphere, and uh, as I say, unbelievably violent game of football. But that team could look after itself, and um, 
that I was a that, big night. I, I suppose that really was probably your equivalent of my sort of 1987 at White Hart Lane semi final. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Except, probably, except probably except to that. It, the only difference being that we'd already been better than Tottenham for 20 yeah. years by then. Do you yeah, know what I mean? We've yeah, been the big yeah. club in North London for 20 years yeah. by yeah. then. But no, but you have that, you know, and it, I think you talk to a lot of people and you think that the first time they really get it about the Arsenal will be an Arsenal Tottenham game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, beating them in a big game, you, you understand it then, don't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, particularly going there, you know, I'm lucky enough to have seen us win the league twice there. But I mean, not you know, being in the ground to to witness it twice. So, yeah, yeah. I think it is a big part of, of being an Arsenal supporter. It really is. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Well, what was your actual first match then at Highbury? Can you remember? I haven't got the plainest idea. I haven't got, yeah. a, I haven't got a clue. I, I, something tells me it was, well, 65-66 would have been the season. Maybe Stoke, something like that. I don't really remember games until, because the real thing was, one, it was like the afternoon out with me old man. And yeah. we'd never, you know, we, we'd never gone to football together. And he wasn't a football man, really. He was more of a cricket man. He grew up down in Kent. But I got him to take me. I was sort of nine, ten, I suppose. And so we sort of got into it together, really. And so what I really remember is more about the atmosphere, about, you know, the old geezers moaning about how long it was since we won anything. The kind of, you know, all these sort of blokes around and it was all blokes then really um sort of you just thousands of grown-ups around you it was quite kind of made left quite a mark and as i say it wasn't really until the next couple of seasons that i started taking in the football to be perfectly honest yeah well i suppose obviously like you said we then approached a really successful kind of spell didn't we for the club as well so yeah makes sense Makes it even better, doesn't it? I mean, just kind of a bit more up to date. Obviously, on Saturday we we won the Community Shield, our second trophy under Mikel Arteta already. Um, yeah. How, how do you think we played against Liverpool? What's um What was your thoughts on I the way? For an hour, we were excellent, really. Um, I think um, you know, obviously we've, you know, you you're competing against clubs, particularly Man City and Liverpool, who are kind of four or five years down the line. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, in terms of putting teams together and working out a way to play and. So, if you bear that in mind, I think uh, what we did um, in the uh, in the community shield was, you know, was was really good. I thought, you know, obviously we were the better team for sixty minutes, playing yeah. counter attacking football, but we were the better team. Um, and uh, absolutely, it's a pity Joe Willock didn't score that header right at the end because I think we're probably yeah. over over the piece. We deserve to win the game in normal time, but. Um, and funny enough, that lad who missed the penalty, I was a bit gutted for him because I, I really like him as a player. I, I go yeah, and watch, yeah, I go yeah. and watch Swansea a bit, and he, you know, he he was fantastic for him second half of last season. More or less on his own, gotten to the to the playoffs. Do you know what I mean? They really were. They come from way way back, and he just had six months at the Liberty, and he's a he's a really he's a really good player, and by all accounts, he's a great lad. So, but someone had to miss, didn't they? Yeah, luckily it wasn't yeah, one of them. We weren't going to. We weren't going to. We don't miss in penalty shootouts. So, no, it's no. good. Good, You know, there's a plan. You know, everybody goes out and yeah, you like to see it. Everybody knows the job they have to do. I mean, did you read much into that result and performance in terms of the season ahead? I mean, Liverpool didn't quite look at their best, did they, if we're honest? Well, no, look, they were 40 points better than us last year. And if you go yeah. back to last season's, uh, community Shield, Man City beat them on penalties and finished 20, 20 points behind them. So, yeah, no, true. it true. doesn't mean nothing. What it means is, well, I was about to say a really good day out, which of course it weren't. It was just a <laughs> day in front of the telly. But you know what I mean? It was just, you take it for what it is. Um, and I think one-off games like that, you know, we can, um, you want people, to, you know, you want, you want the players, you want the supporters to kind of go, there's something happening here. Mm. And I think there is something happening with Arteta. There is definitely something happening. Um, so that was another that was another step with that. I just hope people don't get ahead of themselves because we are a mile off. We're a mile off. Do you know what I mean? Over the course of a season, we are a mile off. But I mean, 
I, I think what, what we've noticed is that we've been able to now under our set compete against the, the bit better teams, haven't we? We used to get turned over quite a lot by Liverpool and Man City and teams like that, whereas now we're competing better against them, aren't we? I think that's the biggest difference I've noticed. Yeah, well, maybe we've learned a little bit of humility because we're beating them by being the underdogs. We're playing yeah. like underdogs. Yeah. We're, you know, we're just absolutely congesting it on the edge of our box and hitting teams on the break. We've got, you know, arguably the one player in the team who would get into any team in the Premier League up front. You think there's always a goal there. Um, and that that's it. I think in the past, you know, you look at how we've gone and played and I don't know if it's in our heads or in the managers that, oh, we, you know, this is a meeting of equals. Well, it's not. Mm. You know, playing Liverpool, they, they were 40 points ahead of us. You yeah. know, that's a team that has been four or five years developing and working out a way to play. And do you know what I mean? I've got, mm. We're underdogs and we can play like underdogs. Yeah, yeah, our you know, problem when we play the small teams at home, isn't it? That's going to be our problem now, isn't it? Figuring out how to beat them as well when teams come and sit deep and we've got to break them down. I, I don't know if that will be. I, I don't know if that will be a major. I know people are saying, well, good playing counter attacking. But I think if, um, you know, if we stay organized, if we stay organized, then I don't see any reason why we can't. I think there's enough creativity in that team particularly as it looks like Sobias is coming back. It was, it was very good after lockdown. I weren't having him really when he first arrived, but to be yeah. fair to him, he was great after lockdown. I yeah. think that Pepe may show what kind of player he is. Um, and I think we've got players who are good on the book. So I'm not sure about that. I, 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 you know, teams that defend deep against us. No, I don't think necessarily. It, seemed to, be a, it seemed to be a bit of a problem last season, didn't it? At home, we drew a lot of games, didn't we? against teams yeah. maybe we would have expected to have beaten. Uh, and, you know, we found it difficult to create chances against a lot of them, didn't we? I mean, well-organised teams, Sheffield United, for example, Wolves, you know, teams that are well-organised and got plenty of people behind the ball. We, we seem to struggle in them games a little bit. Whereas yeah, when we everybody, play, everybody, everybody struggled in games like that. You know, you look at Liverpool, they struggled in games like that. Number of games they won with a goal in the last minute. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Yeah, true, but yeah. what I'm saying is we're better set up now than we were if nothing else, because the manager's got, will have a plan to play against those teams. And this, this group will have been playing together for that much longer. And I think mm. you can't underestimate the importance of kind of believing in yourselves. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking this up like we're going to, do you know what I mean? If we get anywhere near the top four, that would be a miracle. Because we are, we are a long way back. You only have to look at the table from last season. We are mm. a long way back. But it's definitely better. And it's going to get better, I believe, while this fella is in charge. Um, and yeah. so I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't worry too much. There will be, you know, there'll be games where, you know, we'll be let down by just whatever it is. And we won't get, you know, we won't get the results to, to make any kind of challenge for titles or anything like that. But what's great is we know we can raise ourselves for, for games and, you know, mm. We'll be, you know, it's it's better. It's you know, you feel like you feel like you you feel good about what you're watching at the moment, and you don't feel like we're going to get turned over by anybody either now, do you? I think those days seem to be behind us. Hopefully, that's the impression yeah, I get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, to be honest, it looks like an Arsenal team to me. You yeah. know, I think they're all kind of you know, there's this sort of quality of um, you know, of sort of determination and people who understand what it is to to play for this club and stuff, you know, who actually value being Arsenal players, not just mm. being footballers, but being Arsenal players. And that's yeah. got a lot to do with the number of lads who've come through, I think. Yeah. And also it's to do with signing the right kind of personalities, you know, um, and, mm. um, you know, someone like Aubameyang, to be fair to him, absolutely leads by example. Do you know what I mean? It's, um, mm. it's, it's good yeah, from yeah. that point of view. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just going back to sort of to, to yourself, really. I know um, you wrote the book, the end, didn't you, about the North Bank, the old North Bank at Highbury, yeah. which was, well, which was a say, great... yeah. You say wrote. I mean, really, what yeah. I did was you just put it together. Stories, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I did I mean, write really... books in it, but 
Yes. It was a great book, I think, for anybody that, you know, was at Highbury for any amount of time. I mean, what was your sort of favourite memory of the North Bank yourself? Did you, I know you said you was a clock end boy, really. I mean, did you go on the North Bank? End, really. I mean, all of my, I, I mean, to be honest, there's a few, there's a few actually. Well, there's a lot. Um, but funny enough, for me, I mean, there were obvious, obviously, I did go and watch football in the North Bank. Yeah. Um, and I can remember some great occasions, some weird occasions. I went to, I went, you won't remember, but in the 70s, it, there was a three day week. There was right. like minor strike and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And they, they switched off the electricity. So it was like a three day working week. And so they put on games in the afternoons. And I remember we had a, a cup replay against Derby. And I bumped off school and went to it. And it was some <laughs> two o'clock kickoff or something in the afternoon. And there were so many other people who bumped off or they, you know, they weren't at work that day. The place was absolutely rammed, and it was one of those a terrible game. It was nil nil, I think. Finished nil nil, I think. Went to another replay, of. but a, a barrier went. Could have been really, really bad afternoon. I was like up on the because it, in many ways, it my favourite place to watch football from at, at Arsenal was the corners of the North Bank. I just thought it was, it's just a great view. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I like that view anyway from a corner because it's yeah. sort of taking the whole thing there. From there, yeah. and it was great. The wings of the North Bank were great for that. But it was on; it was just in front of me. This barrier went down, but you know, people were kind of sensible, and it, it was all right. I don't think anybody got hurt or anything. But I no, lots of great, um, great. I tell you one. I've had a, I had a season ticket East Low. I've had a season ticket East Low since seventy one, because um, we had to get season tickets because we could only get one ticket for the seventy one final because we bought a program every every game. Me and my yeah. old man have been to all the home games and quite a lot yeah. of away games that season, particularly in the cup. But we'd only ever bought one programme, and that's how you used to get cup final tickets with a yeah. little voucher. Yeah, yeah. So we have one complete set of vouchers, so we only got one ticket. I mean, we were, well, I can't have this again, so we got season tickets next season. But I do remember some nights. I remember, um, what year was it? Um, 88. We ended up, funny enough, losing... In the uh, we, we lost the final, the League Cup final to Luton. Yeah, but we yeah. played Everton. We played yeah, Everton. That, that was a great in, night. Yeah. In, and the North Bank that night was like, I don't know what happened because you know, over the piece, no ground is loud all the time, and the no. North Bank weren't loud all the time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. By any means, that night. Blimey up, Riley. That night, I mean, I remember that as, you know, and you think this is the second leg of a League Cup semi final. Yeah. The atmosphere, I cannot remember a better atmosphere. The North Bank went absolutely berserk that night. I don't know. And my, yeah. my seat in the East Lower was right at the North Bank end. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. although I weren't in the North Bank, obviously. You kind of saw a lot, you know, when West Ham come in and the smoke bomb and everybody on the pitch and all that. You've seen a lot of stuff there. The one, I, I don't know, but that, it was great that night against Everton because, of course, it was very soon after that, Hillsborough was only, you know, like a year later. Yeah. yeah. And and obviously, you know, terraces came to an end, and which was why I did the book in the first place sort of thing. But that, that when I think back to the, the North Bank, that night against Everton was unbelievable. I was also on the North Bank. I did go on the North Bank for the very last game. Uh, 90, would that have been 93, 94? 92 it was, wasn't it? Southampton. Yeah, Southampton. Right, he scored at trick because yeah, he knew. Yeah. He knew. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's just brilliant. Yeah. And the last goal, he run. He's like yeah. run from inside his own half. He beat about five players, scored into the North Bank. You go, yeah. only right he would do that. It's, yeah. So, you know, I've got lots of you know, lots of, of great memories. But as I say, a lot of them are watching the North Bank rather than being in it, if you know what I mean. Because um, yeah, we were yeah. at the clock end. And yeah. as I say, East Lower season tickets since 71. But I used to, you know, sometimes like, you know, me, me old man to take something else and I'd go on the North Bank or whatever it was. But um, no, a lot of the, funny enough, a lot of the memories are watching it rather than being in it sort of thing. 
Um, yeah, I mean, same with me. I mean, I, I used to be on a clock end more than the North Bank, to be honest. I mean, I did have a few games on the North Bank. I, I just remember that penalty that Brian McClare stuck in the North Bank. That always oh, yeah, me. yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, was a, that was a great memory. That, well, that, was, that was the start of it, really. That was the start of the whole Man United thing, do you know what I mean? Because yeah, then yeah. you think about the Battle of Old Trafford, like the, the thing at Old Trafford with the scrap I was up there for that as well. That's yeah, brilliant, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Go up, yeah. oh, but but that was all about that miss penalty. Yeah, That's, yeah, it was, that yeah. was all about that miss penalty by by McLear, Absolutely. Yeah, no, they were happy days actually, weren't they? Um, just obviously another another book that you wrote was a David Beckham autobiography, wasn't it? What, what, what yeah. was what was he like to work with? I bet that was fun. Yeah, great, great, really good actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I knew him a little bit. I knew his agent at the time really well, and they were. You know, they were thinking to do the book. Uh, Tony asked me, said, would you be interested? Because he knew I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't writing for a newspaper or anything like that. So it, things yeah. would be, um, you know, he knew he could trust me in terms of keeping things private until the book come out sort of thing. And, uh, you know, it was, re it was really, it was, um, obviously it was absolutely fascinating process, the whole thing. Um yeah not least because we um, ended up uh, we ended up winning the league that year, doing the double that year, in fact. Yeah, um, yeah doing the double that Was it that year? Did we do the double that year? I, I don't know. It's an age thing. It get, but the thing was, it's <laughs> no. all happening. It's yeah. all happening. So I remember us going up there, winning 2-0 in the cup, Edu yeah. scoring. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, that was the night that after the game, they had a big round. He's yeah. kicked the boot. He's yeah. kicked the boot and cut. Well, the following day, I'm in Manchester. You know, I've gone up for the game, but then I've stayed over and me and David spent the whole of the Sunday working. And then I was wow. working with Gary Neville on the Monday. So he was, no, he's very good to work with. Look, he is a bloke who is absolutely, you just wish... Everybody would be like that, really. He's a bloke. If he says he'll do something, then he does not do it by us. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to do a book. And, you know, I said this to him before I, I agreed to do it. You know, if you're going to do this, you've got to do it. Absolutely. So I'm going to do a book. That meant doing it properly. Mm. Doing it properly. Putting in the time, because obviously I'm physically writing the words. But, it's, you know, you've got to put in... You're talking, you know, 40, 50 hours and more. And then yeah. introductions to all the other people that you need to talk to to help put the story together and stuff. You know, mum and dad and Gary Nev and, uh, you know, all the Steve McLaren and people, people who are around Eric Harris and people who are around the story um, who you wanted to get, you know, a bit of perspective from. And, David was absolutely, he was just, he was top man. He was great to work with, absolutely great to work with, just in the same way, because obviously I, I saw a bit of that. He'd be a manager's dream. Manager's yeah. dream. He had a fantastic career, one, because he had real ability, mm. but two, in terms of work ethic and professionalism, look, yeah, yeah. can't beat the bloke. You absolutely cannot beat the bloke. Yeah, I mean that's the thing that stood out for me with Beckham, his work rate and his ethic to uh, improve and be the best that he could be. You know, staying out behind after training and all that kind of stuff. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent, and game after game after game after game doing that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, um, I mean, I can't, I can't speak to you without mentioning East Enders, obviously. Um, you know, a lot, a lot back in the day for me. I mean, how did how did the part lofty come about for you? How, how did you get the part? Was it something that well, you? Yeah, it was just an audition. Do you know what I mean? I, I think I, my agency, I was with a cooperative actors agency and one of the people who was also in that agency was one of the writers. So they put my name forward for a particular part. You go, you do the audition, you have a chat with them. Boom. Wow. That must, that must have felt good to get that though, wasn't it? To be honest, didn't mean anything because it hadn't been out. Nobody knew what it would be. I mean, it felt okay. good because it was like a year's contract. I've never had a year's contract for anything. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. from that point of view, that's great. You know, I've been coughing a spit here and there. I've just had my first little lead part on television, but that was in a 
half hour kids drama thing. Do you know what I mean? And this was like, they're going to pay me for a year. Happy days. But that's all it was. I didn't, because nobody knew what, what was going to happen with it. No, no. I mean, well, it must have been great to have been part of that process when, you know, the show went, like you said, from nothing to becoming probably the most viewed show on the TV at the time that you was in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was. It was really, you know, it was it was interesting. I mean, I think I kind of, for a little while, I blew it a bit. It's a bit easy for those kind of things to go to your head, do you know what I mean? And for a little while, I think it may be, I think I was a bit of a, bit of a, a, a numpty for a little while, really. I just, do you know what I mean? Because you think, oh, blimey, look, I'm, you know, I'm on telly, <laughs> you know. But, but that goes... Yeah. And then, and then you really, really enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Because then, once you realise that it's not actually you, it's the character. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, that character has got nothing to do with me, other than a sort of physical resemblance. Other than that, we're not. I was just playing a part, and it was that character that people liked, and that character that was successful in the show. And that's true of everybody in the show, really. But we started playing football, started a charity football team after about after I've been in it about a year and a half or so. We started a charity football team and and that was really, really great. That was because that made it kind of social as well. Do you know what I mean? We had yeah. like half a dozen lads who were on the show and then we had mates and do you know what I mean? Mates who had nothing to do with the show. And we, you know, we were playing like 60 games a year. It was absolutely. And, and obviously it was quite an exciting time at the Arsenal as well, you know, because mm. you are talking about League Cup finals and, um, you know, yeah. winning the league at Anfield just after I left and stuff. And, do you know what I mean? So it was, it was quite an exciting time. I was getting, they used to let me play with the um, Arsenal X pro and Celebrity Eleven. Oh, no, sorry. Then it was the Arsenal Vets. So these are all the fellas that I grew up watching, like Raddy, Charlie George, Frank McClintock, Pat Rice, you know, all these people. Yeah, yeah. They had a vets team. Now, I wasn't actually a vet, but I was so rubbish that it was like I was playing off a <laughs> handicap, do you know what I mean? And they thought, I right, might get a few more, but if they have some geezer from East Enders down, might get a few more people. And to be fair, we ended up putting those two teams together, the Arsenal Vets and the Warford Boys Club, which was the East Enders team, put those together. And that became the Arsenal X Pro and Celebrity Eleven, which is going to this day. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah, that's nearly yeah. thirty years. In fact, it is thirty years near enough. Yeah. Um, so, and that was that was a really really good time doing the show. The show's really working. It's really successful. We're going out playing football every weekend. Do you know what I mean? Having a right laugh, watching the Arsenal. Pff, happy days. And obviously, you know, you've got. A, put in there around right around the same time as the second summer of love so that was that was a good that was a good spell that i mean i actually only really found out today i didn't realize that lofty's surname was holloway did you have any say in that obviously holloway no, no, that was, no that was the character's name george holloway that was not the character <laughs> just it seemed ironic didn't it really that he had that name really i suppose well and that's where i grew up, all the way, you grew up as well. yeah but it was completely coincidental <laughs> I mean, going back, going back to Arsenal, I mean, what, what do you make the sort of impact that Arteta's made since he's been there? I mean, he's not been there very long, but he seems to have had a big influence on everything, doesn't he, at the club? Yeah, I think so. I think so. He has, you know, he's obviously... Um, I know I know. some people go, oh, why didn't we appoint him first? I think actually the year and a half away, you know, the year and a half with, with Unai wasn't the worst thing in the world to happen. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that the extra year and a half at City as obviously, you know, because I think, um, unlike Arsene, really, in fact, if anything, is what cost Arsene, is it, it wasn't great at delegating. Whereas Pep Guardiola, obviously, is very good at delegating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For all that he's the kind of big, he would obviously Arteta was taking sessions. Pep was listening to what he said during the week, on the touchline during games. Do you know what I mean? It was so yeah. I think it was a, a fantastic kind of that it got better and better for Arteta at City because he had more and more responsibility, more and more to do, more and more dealing with the players. And I, I think that that's has stood him in good stead because I think when he comes, he's absolutely bang ready for it. And yeah. he's arrived with a plan. 
He's looked. He knows what he's got. And he's got a plan for getting the best out of what he's got. And that's what he's still doing. And you've got to say, getting the best out of what he's got and winning the FA Cup and then the, the Community Shield while you're doing that, while you are, you are not playing necessarily the way you want to play, you're playing to get the best out of what you've got. Mm. You've got to give him absolute 100% credit. I mean, what sort of com comparisons or differences do you think there is between maybe Arteta and some of our more successful managers, such as, say, Bertie Mee from early in your days, or George Graham, Arsene Wenger? Do you think he's got any of them similarities there with him, anything that's sort of similar, or do you think he's completely different? I think he is different. I think if, if there was anybody that you might compare him to, um, both in terms of style of play and in terms of where the club was when he arrived and the immediate impact he was, he's been able to have. And to some extent, yes, yeah, to some extent, the style of play. I would say the comparison is probably with George Graham. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to look like, I mean, Bertie Mee, don't get me wrong, it's unbelievable what he did, although... But he had Don Howe. He had Dave Sexton and Don Howe. So all the time that he was manager, Bertie, and Bertie knew about delegating and he knew what he was good at and what he wasn't so good at. And by the way, while he was manager, he had the two best coaches in the country mm -hmm. working for him, who were actually the ones taking training and, do you know what I mean, taking yeah. sessions, working out a style of play. But George... Um, I think, you know, you look at where the club was when George arrived. Um, I think it was kind of a bit rudderless, a bit, you know, you didn't know where it was going. It wasn't a team that you went and thought that represents Arsenal, that represents what I believe an Arsenal team to be. It looked like a collection of individuals. And George just shook it up. Yeah. Gave young players games, trusted young players insisted on certain standards, played counter-attacking football uh, and almost straight away won things. Yeah. So I think that, you know, and that bought in time. So I would say that if there's a comparison to be made, the comparison is with George. No, I would totally agree with that. Yeah. Well, Plus as well, you took, a player as well. It ended the way it ended with George, but. Yeah, no, no, exactly. And he seems quite, um, you know, uh, quite a strict kind of manager as well, like George was. He doesn't seem to, uh, he's got certain standards that everyone's got to reach and that's similar to what George brought as well, didn't he? No, absolutely. And it's what the club needed at the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's what the club needed at the time. And um, yeah, so, and I think that now he's obviously with Raul moving on and the chief executive not really being a football guy. Do you know what I mean? He's a commercial guy, Vinay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think, um, you know, Mikel has found it, will find himself with much more responsibility, much more, you know, I think that people can trust, people trust him. Mm. We supporters trust him, don't we? Yeah, we yeah, trust yeah. him. The yeah. players obviously trust him and mm. so does them upstairs. They trust him. Yeah. So, and that's, that's got, I think that's got to be good um, because I think he embodies a lot of things that are quite important about Arsenal. Okay, no, definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, you just sort of touched on Raul leaving. I mean, what, what do you make of all the sort of changes going on behind the scenes recently with the scouting, with the coaching, people coming in, obviously, with Raul leaving and a few others? Do you think that's what was needed, a bit of a shake-up? Who knows? Who knows? I think Raul leaving is a step forward. Yeah. I'm not sure getting rid of two or three of the best scouts in the country is a step forward. I don't know what that says about the way we're going to do our recruitment. Um, I don't like to think of a club doing its recruitment mostly through agent or a particular agent. I don't mm -hmm. think that's a kind of healthy situation. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, Franny, mm -hmm. Peter Clark, Soups, Brian McDermott, you know, these were these are top people. 
yeah. top people. We've already lost Steve Rowley. Yeah. Top. Top. So I don't know who's stepping up to that or whether we're going, well, we don't need eyes on the ground anymore. I don't know. So what's mm. happened? I think there was definitely too many cooks going on. So Rao going is good. Is yeah. a step forward for the club. Um, and now let's see what happens. Now let's see. Um, as I say, I don't want to. I don't want to put pressure on the geezer, but I, I do trust Mikel. Yeah. I, you know, I do trust Mikel Arteta. Yeah. And I, I think as long as he has as much input over recruitment as he does over the way we play, then we've got a chance. Yeah. But, no. no. Uh, I oh, think yeah. you know shake ups. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Because I'm not, you know, but I'm, I'm, you know, these are these are people that I know. They're people whose qualities I, you know, I respect and admire. They're people who've done amazing things for Arsenal, um, and we're still doing amazing things for Arsenal, by the way. Um, so I'm, I, I remain to be convinced about what's going on upstairs and behind the scenes and stuff. But that's fine. Maybe it'll all work out. Maybe it won't. But what I go and watch uh, every other week, or I hope to soon. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with you know. I'm good with a manager. I'm good with a lot of the you know, a lot of the players. And what I like is, you know, that the way individual players have kind of been humble enough to go. I need to, you know, I need to pull my finger out here. You know, people like Shaka, Mustafi. You know, I mean Shaka. Perfect case in point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, everything that had happened around that, it was Crystal Palace, wasn't it, the game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah everything Palace, that happened yeah. around that game, like, it was all like, and to be honest, the geezer's got completely the wrong end of the stick. Yeah, yeah. He's so far up himself at that time. He's completely got the wrong. People are only, people are only jeering because we're struggling in the game. He should be sprinting off. Not yeah. walking off feeling sorry for himself. It's not about him. It's about the team. That's why people were having a pop. They weren't having a pop at him personally. But of course, he took it all personally. And obviously, you know, people weren't reading that situation. Mikel Arteta's come in. You know, you look at... He's transformed Shaka. Yeah, Suddenly, yeah. Shaka is just all about the team. The ego's gone. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. And because he knows what he's supposed to be doing, I don't mean vaguely, he knows what he's supposed to be doing every single minute, then yeah. those those three or four square passes that went straight to the feet of an opponent and as often as not ended up in a goal or another terrible tackle in the penalty area, he's managed to get rid of most of them from his game mm. because he, he believes in Arteta and can see a way forward. And he's, you know, I love to see that. Someone who I, I want, you know... I. It sounds stupid, but I like nothing better than when I see a player and go, don't want it. What's he doing at the club? And then you go, over the course of a few months, the geezer yeah. kind of reinvents himself and gets things right. And you go, actually, fair play. Fair play. Yeah. So, but I mean, personally, I don't think we're going to win the league with Jack playing central midfield. But you've got to say, since Arteta come in, I think he has worked so hard at his game. He has bought into everything that Arteta's trying to do. He's bought into the collective. Stop mm. worrying about himself so much. And you go, fair play, mate. Absolutely fair play. I was slaughtering you, and now you'll do for me. And you look around the team, and there's lots of people. Mustafi. Yeah, yeah. He's another you one, think, yeah. You quite comfortably never see that geezer play for Arsenal again. Yeah. But things change, and that's got to be credit to the manager as well as the player themselves. You know, they've mm. they've put the um, uh, yeah, they 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 they've bought into it. They? They've bought into what? Yeah, what absolutely, I'm, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. and that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I totally agree. Um, just a couple of sort of quick fire questions for it for you, really. Who's your favourite yeah. player at the time? Um, Dennis. Yeah, that's a good choice. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you might go. Know, maybe you, you obviously you got a bit more. 
I mean, yeah. my favourite player is probably the player that was my favourite when I was a kid, which was John Radford. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. And over the years, you know, you get to know a bloke, you get, you know, play football with him, end up watching games with him. You know, John Radford's just for me. That's like, that was who I wanted to be when I was a kid. Do you know what I mean? When you're playing and you're kicking around, you're playing football in the street like people used to, but you're yeah. playing football in the street and you, everybody's yeah. a player. Do you know what I mean? And I was John Radford. That was my thing. It was John Radford. So in that way, favourite. But Dennis, you know, and we've yeah. been lucky. We've had amazing play. You know, I look at, I thought Liam Brady would be the best player I ever saw play for us. And then yeah. Dennis come up. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, and and once once Chippy says Dennis Bergkamp is the best player ever to play for Arsenal, you go well. If you're saying that, mate, I'll take that. I'll, you know, you know, you would know because there's an argument saying you were the best. Do you know what I mean? He was. Yeah. Liam was unbelievable, and I'm a god. Oh, I saw so many of his games. Um, he was he was unbelievable. But Dennis Dennis was just special, special, and Dennis. Transformed the club as well. I just yeah. had this impact on, you know, obviously, you know, you've got players like Thierry and Patrick Pierre and one thing like that. Then he's changed everything, you know. Yeah. He yeah. Changed he did. everything. Yeah. He had the aura, didn't he? Yeah. And he changed everything in the, in the same way that Arsene changed everything. And I think they were very important to each other. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do think that in many ways, Dennis had the, in a quieter way, perhaps less obvious ways, had the same impact on the club and maybe the same impact on English football that yeah. Arsene, you know, he just, then he's changed everything. Yeah, no, he did, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, next question, apart from obviously Anfield 89, what would be your favourite match, do you think, that you've seen Arsenal? Um, oh, without question, second leg of the 1970 uh, Fairs Cup against Anderlecht. 3-1 down from the first leg, 1-3-0, first trophy in 18, 19 years, first trophy I ever saw Arsenal win. First time I'd ever run on the pitch at Ivory, me and 50,000 other people, <laughs> you know. And the players weren't bothered about getting off, by the way. they come on the pitch, you know, they were on the pitch with it. Unbelievable. Atmosphere, that team, oh, uh, absolutely unbelievable night. I mean, to be, to be honest, and I was at Anfield in 89, and don't get me wrong, amazing. But still, Anderlecht is the greatest Arsenal game I've ever seen. That is still the greatest Arsenal game I've ever seen. Probably yeah. because I was 15, 16 at the time. And what's happening when you're that age, that's the things that really, you know, yeah. don't get me wrong, Manfield's unbelievable. Unbelievable. But at the time, mm -hmm. you know, this was a team that hadn't won anything since, God, you know, since, what, 1953 or something. And... Yeah. Um, hadn't really looked in any danger of winning her since then. Suddenly this thing come together and, you know, you've got... Andlet were an unbelievable team. Unbelievable team. And the run to that, you know, they were basically the Belgian national team. In the semi-final, we played Ajax. Yeah. Charlie George, greatest, probably still the greatest individual display I've ever seen by an Arsenal player. Right up there with Dennis at, at Leicester, the hat-trick at Leicester. Charlie was unbelievable. Charlie was playing the game. That team, that Ajax team, we beat them in that semi-final. We won 3-0 at Arsenal. Charlie scored a couple. Absolutely mullered. I mean, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, Joe, Joe and Chris coming, blah, blah. Charlie, who was the best player on the pitch by a mile. That Ajax team that we beat in the semi-final that season won the European Cup the next three years. The yeah, next three years yeah. running. Yeah. Anderlecht, unbelievable team. They beat us 3-1 in Belgium. So, to, you know, in terms of kind of achieving the impossible, at the time, that seemed as impossible as going to Anfield and winning by two clear goals. Didn't we? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that night was... That night was fantastic. And there is... I, I mean, I'm just trying to think. But I can't think of, you know... For it to happen at Highbury as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was great going to Anfield, but there's how many, how many Arsenal schools were at Anfield that night? Don't yeah. get me wrong, I, 
you know, winning the league at, at Wild Lane, 2003, 2004, winning the league at Man United. It's all brilliant. Don't get me wrong. How many Arsenal supporters there? When you win something, the only yeah. thing, if to win something in front of your own supporters, where you've really got to do something, I don't mean like, you know, I don't mean like the Everton game where, where Rodder scored and all that. I, I mean, yeah. where it's all down to one game, where it's yeah. all down yeah. to one game. For that yeah. to happen in front of your own crowd, like it did, you know, that's 50,000 Arsenal in there that night. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. The only time that it was like that was when we won the league at Wild well, Lane in 71. Because there was about fifty thousand Arsenal in there. Top, no, there weren't any top sports, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, 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 that was special that night. Yeah, no, no. It, I mean, it, it, I, I'm just glad I was old enough to, to remember that and to have been there really because I've seen the, some clips of it and it did look amazing. Really, like you said, to win something at Highbury like that, that important in that way, must have been yeah. just unbelievable. Really, it's oh, the atmosphere. That, Do you know what I mean? Once Eddie Kelly scored. Eddie yeah. Kelly scored 20 minutes into the game or something. He scored at the clock end. Obviously, the other two goals are down the north bank. But, you know, it's just great. You've got 50,000 people in there or however many it was. And you go, suddenly, all the players on the pitch realised it. Everybody in the crowd realised it. You know, we're going to win this. Yeah. We're going to do these. And it was like Anderlecht. It was like Anderlecht just got completely blown away. And this yeah. is one of the you know, this was one of the great club sides of the era. They were fantastic. Van Hinst and all these people, they were a brilliant team. Half the team were Belgian international. And he just go, when you feel that, 50,000 people together going, we're going to do this, with yeah. the players thinking the yeah. same at the same moment, oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, no, I can fucking imagine that. Like must have been great. Um, well, what what do you think give you more satisfaction? Seeing Arsenal maybe win that Fairs Cup or getting a part in East Enders? Well, like I say, it didn't mean anything to me at the time. No, I take Arsenal winning stuff all the time. Yeah, no, me the too. Only thing that come close. And doing telly, do you know what I mean? Doing telly, it's not the same. There, there are live, you know, there are plays that I've done. Theatre, where yeah. it comes close. In fact, one of them was stage adaptation of Fever Pitch, funny enough. Fever Pitch. Was, I was going to say that using that. Yeah. One man play a Fever Pitch. Yeah. But there's been a few of those, do you know what I mean? Where you just go, oh, this is, you know, where the, the buzz is a bit like, I don't know, when Sylvan Wiltord scores at Old Trafford, do you know what I mean? You have yeah. moments. You have moments. Um, and you, you can get that. You don't really get that on telly or films it's not like that it's a different kind of work it's a different kind of satisfaction and it's not you yeah. know it's not live it's not happening right now in the way that theatres yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that's 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 a fair point actually yeah <laughs> i suppose people just look at it don't they because obviously because you've been on a telly i mean that feels like it's a great thing to, to do and it, it obviously is but like, like you said it's not the same emotional kind of connection, is it, that you have a moment when Michael Thomas scores at Anfield or something like that, is it? It's not. No, it's that's not what that. I mean. That's what I mean. That that's the only time you ever get close to that is, is you know, doing a show with a thousand people in and fifteen hundred people in, and it works. Yeah. Then yeah. sometimes you get that <laughs> similar feeling. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I mean, just sort of in more sort of general football terms. Now, I mean, what what do you make of this international break that we've currently got now, when it's basically pre-season? Do you think that's the right thing to have done, or they should have not not bothered with that? Look, I think. Uh, well, look, everything's up in the air, and it's hard to know what's the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do. I actually think the Nations League ain't a bad idea. Uh, personally, um, I think um, international football is in danger of. Uh, killing itself. Actually, I think top flight football is in danger of killing itself. But thinking yeah. about international football specifically, I just think there are too many games that don't matter, which is why the Nations League is a good idea. Um, mm. You know, it does make those games competitive. And I think everybody got interested and you had that mini tournament in. Uh, personally, I think that, you know, um, the timing ain't great. Although what it does mean is that once the season starts, we won't have that stew because usually we play for two weeks and then there's a gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we would rather get it out of the way now, to be honest. Yeah, I was just thinking more because obviously because of pre-season, maybe players preparing with their clubs for the season as opposed to flying around the world and 
playing in these other games, which could have maybe waited until we're up and running, maybe like usual. But yeah, I kind of see that point actually. Yeah, but it is if, quite frustrating, if, if, isn't it? If they hadn't been flying, if they hadn't been flying off to play, you know, Iceland and Denmark, they, you know, we'd have been flying to Australia or Japan or America or wherever you want to do these pre-season friendlies for, um, you know, commercial purposes. I mean, those yeah. those trips are not proper preparation for a football season. That's, no. that, that's absolute. That's not opinion. That's absolute fact. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's never a good idea from a purely footballing point of view, to go to Australia or go to Japan or go to China or go to America. You don't want to go any further than Austria, mate. Yeah. From a football point of view. Yeah. Don't, you know, it's from a commercial point of view. Well, this, Dem you know, great. I mean, in a way, Denmark and Iceland, those ain't, those ain't bad trips. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to, like, suck the football out of the legs of your players like those long distance trips around the world playing in 35 degrees and do you know what I mean? So I, I don't think it's a disaster in terms of, of preparation and everything's up in the air at the moment anyway. But, you know, yeah, just, yeah uh, that, that, that's, that's true. I mean, I suppose half our squad are probably are flying around the world to play for their countries, aren't they? I suppose. I don't know what, what other yeah, games are on. So, I, don't, I don't know. You know, obviously, you know, you're yeah, aware of but, what's happening. But yeah, at least the European players will only be playing in Europe, which is, which is not so yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just just going back to sort of Arsenal now. Really, I mean, what's your sort of expectations for this season? I know you sort of touched on it before. Um, what do you think would be a successful season for us this this year? Bearing in mind we still might have a couple more transfers to come in, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know really. I, I, you know, I don't really have expectations as such because what I want. Look, I've been really lucky. I've been watching Arsenal for, you know, 50, 50 odd years. And, uh, you know, I think oh, I've been so like, what have I seen? Yeah, in that yeah. time, if you go from winning that Fairs Cup in 1970 through to doing Chelsea on the telly in the cup final 50 years later, you go, I have not had a bad run, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky enough. I don't have to think, oh, well, if we don't do this, if we don't do that, it'll be. What I want to see, all I want to see, my expectations are completely bound up with wanting to see a group of players who are go, that's Arsenal. Mm. A group of players who, whatever happens in a game, win, lose, whatever, wherever they finish in the table, I go, that's Arsenal. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We're a mile off. We're a mile off. And that's fine. But, you know, I just want to see, you know, that that team I grew up watching, you know, like I say, with all those, you know, six, seven t players who come through the youth team who knew what it meant to play for Arsenal. That's what mm -hmm. I want to see. I saw it again, in, you know, at Anfield in 89. Yeah. That, yeah. I saw it again you know, it was still there. That that core thing was still there even when, when Arsene arrived. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I want I want to see that I want I want it to be Arsenal. Um and to kind of and as long as I'm seeing that, as long as I'm seeing people working as hard as I would work if you put a shirt on me back, even though I'm you know, it's like every supporter knows. I'm rubbish, but if they put an Arsenal shirt on, I would run until I was physically sick. I would yeah. run until I had blood coming out of my ears because yeah. it's Arsenal. Yeah. I want to see a group of players playing like that. And if I see that, then I'm happy. Then I'm happy. If I see a player playing like um, Kieran Tierney played, mm. that'd do for me. You yeah. know, and, and then... You know, if if I see a player playing like Ainsley Maitland-Niles has played in the semi-final, the final, and played again in the community, I go, that's fine. You yeah. know, we won't, we will not win every week because we are not good enough. We have not got enough good players, or mm. you know, that's I don't, I'm not bothered about that. I'm more bothered about the collective, and I'm more bothered about it being something that I can go, yeah, that's the Arsenal, and we do yeah. things our way. Do you know what I mean? That's why. So look, 
We'll be better than we were last season. I think we might have a little stab at top four. Might have a little go. But me, I mean, you know, the other thing you've got to remember is when, when I was growing up, I'm sounding like a proper old geezer, which I am, by the way, but the <laughs> FA Cup was still a thing. The yeah, FA yeah. Cup was still a thing. We are rubbish, right? We Apparently, you know, if you read the papers, you listen to, tell, listen to the radio, all these, you know, people talking about the Arsenal, you know, what gives them the right to an opinion about my club, but they do. And they go, oh, Arsenal with this, Arsenal with that, all rubbish. Yeah. You see how many FA Cups we won? Like, if this is Arsenal in the bad times, yeah. that's what I'm saying. How lucky am I that I grew up around the corner from Ivory? If this is the bad times, yeah. because we're talking about best games ever, right up there, not this last Chelsea Cup final, but the 2017, you know, the when Aaron scored the winner. That's right up there in my top four or five Arsenal games ever. Yeah. There are some personal reasons for that. But even so... That is like, you know, you've got to think. Moses gets sent off. Costa scores for them. Giroud comes on, crosses for Ramsey to score the winner in about five minutes. You go, yeah. that's why I watch football. Yeah, yeah. That is why I watch football. Yeah. Because there's nothing else on earth that gives you five minutes like that. Well, no. No, really. It's, <laughs> no. No, no, definitely, definitely. I totally agree. You know, that. so and that's what I want. That's what I want to see. I want to see, you know, I just want to see an Arsenal team. And um, and if I see that, I ain't tearing my ear out if we ain't winning the league because I'm not expecting us to win the league. I ain't even tearing my ear out if we don't make top four because I think it's a big, you know, that I think that's a big ask for mm. this group, even mm. if we bring in one or two more. Yeah, but if yeah. we play, if 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 I go to games or watch games and I see what I saw from lockdown onwards, if I see an Arsenal team competing like they competed against Liverpool at, at the Emirates, competed like they did against Man City in the semi final against Chelsea, if I see that win or lose, I'm going that would do for me. Yeah. Yeah. And we and you just trust that we'll get there in the end. Yeah, you trust we'll get there. You know that things will build. That our, uh, that um, Mikel gets enough support from the club to to for him to feel like he can make progress. Mm. Because you know I'm not wanting to get anybody concerned or anything, but personally, I think. Pep Guardiola will be at Man City for a year. Who do you think would be the first person they offer the job to at Man City? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> now, I yeah. happen to think that if if Mikel believes that he can do something at Arsenal, he will. Mm. Yeah. He'll, yeah. But, so, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. No, no, but I mean, I, I think maybe, you know, people maybe of, of our kind of ear, I mean, I know you go back a little bit further than me, but we've seen so many great things that Arsenal have done. And there's, yeah, not, much that, there's not much that can top it now, is there? So if we don't win stuff now, it's not the end of the world because we've seen it. Well, we've yeah, yeah, I mean, I think there is still, there's always stuff, there's always stuff that can top it, Rich. There's always stuff that can top it. But yeah, so, yeah. you're right, because we've seen so much that's been so great. Yeah. We go... Well, we, we've got a different sense of perspective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, so that's yeah. not to knock people who grew up on our scene. Oh, no, no. Good or for bad. That's, for, you know, it's just that it's happened to be an age. And, yeah. But naturally, if you're older, you have a different perspective. And yeah. what really matters to you is different from what really matters to a teenager today or, a, you know, someone who, you know, grew up watching The Invincibles. Mm. It's, it's it's different it's different so that which is fine so i can only speak from my own experience and as i say that's yeah. that's my what matters more than anything is when i see an arsenal team play i want to go that's arsenal yeah 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 I, I totally agree um i've had a question in here from from albert what he said was um who is the one Arsenal player that you'd have wanted to have seen play that you didn't get to see? He said his is Liam Brady. Who would be yeah, yours? Yeah, yeah. I can tell you, Albert, you did miss something, mate, because he was... Chibi was up there. Oh, what a... 
Chippy, obviously, he's all left foot. So every left footed player always looks better anyway. They yeah. always look better. Left footed players, uh, it, it, you know, if you're left footed, one, you've got a massive chance of making it compared to right footed players because there's fewer of you. And yeah. everything you do just looks good for some reason. Left foot, left foot. Paul yeah. Davis was the same. Left foot, left foot. It just, it works. Do you know what I mean? And Chippy was great and had all the skill in the world, but he could, he, he could scrap as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I would say, of, you know, the thing is, you've got to go, you've got to go way, way back to people yeah. that I didn't see because I've been around for so long. I've seen them all play. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I see yeah. them all play. I'll tell you, I would. Someone I met when I was right in the end, I would love to have seen play. Someone I met, Reg Lewis. Ah, Reg scored. Lewis. He scored twice yeah, in the not, FA Cup final. Yeah, not in 1950 against Liverpool. Now, yeah. uh, there's a fellow called Richard Stubbs, who's uh, Reg's nephew who introduced me to Reg. He got me, when I was doing the end, I wanted a player from that generation. And, you know, yeah. and I've turned up at this little house at Chingford or something, you know, a little semi-detached. I've knocked on the door and this fella has come to the door, shirt, sleeveless jumper, cravat. He's <laughs> opened the door. I've gone, hi, Reg Lewis. And he's gone, yes. I said, oh, I'm Tom Watt. I've come to interview you. And he, he's gone, just let me check something, young man. Mm -hmm. You're not going to ask me to say anything bad about the Arsenal, are you? Wow. I went, no, Reg, as it happens, I'm not. <laughs> and I just went, I wish I'd seen you play. Yeah. I wish I'd seen you play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that was yeah. dumb. And it, because he still looked quite dashing. I mean, he was dashing in, to be fair. Um, I think there are, you know, I think uh, Ken Fryer always says, right up there with his favourite ever players. He, he just... Reg was kind of stylish, scored twice in an FA Cup final, and he still looked, this would have been kind of the 90s. I mean, Reg has passed now, but, you know, then, I don't know how, how old Reg would have been, early 90s, but he just looked, absolutely looked the part. Do you know what I mean? You know that look, shirt, yeah. cravat, sleeveless yeah. jumper. Yeah. Don't, don't imagine you're going to get me to say anything bad about the Arsenal young. Wow. So I would have liked to have seen Reg play. I was lucky to meet him. I would have loved to have watched him play as well. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that was a good question, actually, because uh, yeah. there's so many. I mean, like you said, I mean, any, anyone for me really in, from really the double team, I would have loved to have seen Charlie George, for example, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Charlie always play. Um, just I uh, just loved his whole attitude as well. You know, the fact he'd come from the north bank onto the into the team and stuff like that. You know, yeah, so yeah. I think oh, what a what a player, mate. It would have been my player. choice. I think to maybe wish I could have seen him play, but you know, unfortunately, life doesn't work like that, does it? You just get to see who you get to see, and we've been, like I said, yeah. we've been happy, haven't we, with the players? No, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So, really have, uh, have too many complaints. Well, thanks for thanks to say thanks for joining me tonight. So it's been an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure Rich. Talking to all things football and Arsenal in particular, it's been fantastic. You know, um, obviously you've got some great memories of, of the club as well, which is fantastic. And I say it's great to chat to you. Hopefully, maybe later in the season we can have you back on when see how things are going. Up. You know where I am? Up the Arsenal. Up the Arsenal, indeed. Thanks for coming on. Anyway, thanks for joining. Me. I know you've got to get off now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah you're, 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 pleasure, you're, mate. You've got loads of stuff to do. So thanks for coming on. Anyway, it's been brilliant chatting to you. I really appreciate it. Um, and I say I look forward to uh, to chatting to you again. Fantastic. So that's that's Tom. That was Tom there joining me tonight on over and over and over again. If you enjoy the channel, if you like what you what I'm doing on, on here, please subscribe. Um, please like and share the the, the content as well. Um, so I really enjoyed that um, chatting to Tom there. Fantastic um, uh, hour we spent there. I hope you've enjoyed it too. And I say if you do, please subscribe to the channel um, and please um, watch the other stuff that I'm doing. And hopefully we can uh, I say we'll get Tom back on again later on at some point um, during the season as well. Um, and uh, speak to him again. I've got some more guests coming up as well, uh, later shows as well as we move into the new season. So stay tuned for all that. Um, thanks for everyone for watching. Thanks for your comments and your questions and stuff in, in the chat. It's good to see everyone in there, Jonathan and, and obviously Albert as well and, and a few other people that have been. Uh, Winston was in the chat as well. Russ as well. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, and of course, Ryan as well, who's a big uh, supporter of what I'm trying to do as well. So uh, thanks for all you guys. I hope you enjoyed that.
I really enjoyed it as well. So great to great to chat to such a, a great gooner as well. So brilliant. So thanks a lot for, for joining me tonight. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, obviously, you can watch the show back as well if you've missed, uh, if you missed any of it. It'll be streaming back on YouTube soon as well. I'll put a link onto that as well. Um, so I say thanks to everyone for, for watching. Thanks to Tom. Um, and as always, I'll speak to you soon. And come on, you gunners!